All right, awesome. Um, this is actually the first time at BFIT we have done something like this, so I'm super excited. Welcome, everyone. Um, a lunch and learn, but you had to bring your own lunch. We can't do that virtually yet. So, or little snacks, tea. I have water. We're already over 50 people. Um, I think over 100 have signed up. So happy Sunday. It is Sunday. I'm glad everyone's schedules were clear for this. Um, we have a super exciting, special, amazing guest today. Um, someone that lives out in our area and is a true hero um, on the front lines of healthcare right now and always. Um, Jenny's actually attended to my son when he cracked his noggin open in the ER. Um, she's <laughs> um, done a lot of things for everyone. But yes, we have Dr. Jenny Walker in the house today. She's going to be giving a presentation, a uh, long bio. Maybe she can go over her bio a little. But the reason I reached out to Jenny, um, and thankfully, we should all be so grateful she is volunteering this precious time. Um, as you can imagine, they're pretty busy on the front lines right now of healthcare. But the reason I really wanted to bring Jenny to this team right now is because I think she offers what we all need right now, and that's the traditional side of medicine, and she also has the holistic side. So we're merging the two sides, which I truly believe is where we need to take the future of healthcare. I'm not going there with that, but I think that this um, topic is just so important to us all right now, and there's so much floating around out there. I myself am always confused, so I was like, who would I ask? these questions too. And um, she's willing to share this with all of us. I see a lot of nurses in the house. Um, so I'm going to turn it over. What we're going to do, Jenny's going to talk for a little while kind of about the current state of what's going on and um, give some facts and stuff like that. And then we'll go through a section about what we can be doing to keep our immune system strong and healthy um, now, but really always, right? We should always be worried about that. And then we'll end with some questions and answers. I don't think we'll have time for everyone. We have a list of someone who's already received. And then we'll just see where that takes us um, up till one o'clock. So without further ado, you guys listen to me enough. I will turn it over to Je Dr. Jenny Walker. That's okay. I got to be totally correct. She's earned that title. All right. There you go. Hi, everybody. Um, I hope uh, this turns out to be helpful for you guys. Um, I guess uh, Rochelle wanted me to do a little bit of a background bio. Um, uh, it's not that spectacular, but uh, I am conventionally trained, a uh, board certified emergency room physician, and I've been working in our town for 16 years now, almost 17. Um, and a few years ago, I just started to um, realize that conventional medical care was not really going to help people get healthier. The ER is fun because when people break themselves, I can fix, you know, we can fix them pretty easily, but chronic health conditions are not getting better in our current system. And so um, uh, about a year and a half ago, I finished the Cresser Institute training for functional medicine. And over the last year, I've done all of the Institute for Functional Medicine um, modules um, and will be certified with them shortly. And then um, I opened up my own practice uh, again about a year and a half ago, um, just a little side business trying to help people figure out ways to uh, get healthier and kind of reverse under, un, determine the underlying cause and reverse uh, chronic illness. Um, so... And that's been really fun, uh, but uh, things have taken a little bit of a turn over the last uh, couple of months as we, as the United States has dealt with its first pandemic in at least a hundred years would be my guess. Um, so, um, so I just thought I would do a little bit of uh, um, discussion about the coronavirus and what it is and how to get it and what kind of treatments there are. And then um, after that, talk about what we can do um, from a functional perspective to try and support our immune systems and keep us and our families healthy. Um, so um, Rochelle, unless there's anything else you want me to add, I'll just dive right in. Okay, so coronavirus, I'm sure you all have been watching the news, and so a lot of this will just be a re review, but um, it is called COVID-19, which stands for Coronavirus ID in 2019, and it was discovered in China in early December. Um, it probably did originate from some sort of exotic animal. 
um, and event and transferred to humans and now is able to do human to human transmission. And we've seen this before, actually, we've seen similar outbreaks and usually in China, um, SARS and MERS over the last 20 years, which, um, you know, I think unfortunately made us a little complacent because those did not turn into pandemics. They didn't transmit as easily as this one does. And so it took um, the rest of the world a little while to catch up to the fact that this one is a little different and much easier to catch and, um, and can make people very sick. Um, part of the reason why um, COVID or coronavirus is more widespread is because it can survive outside of the host for longer than those other viruses. It can survive on steel, plastic, hard surfaces for up to three days. Um, and it can survive on cardboard for up to 24 hours. It's also um, droplet spread, which actually is better than aerosolized. Um, but if you have close contact with anybody, if they cough or sneeze and touch their mouth and then touch the hard surface, then the virus gets transmitted, transferred to that. And then they can, um, uh, you know, then the next person that touches it and then touches their mouth can get the virus. Um, so, um, so that is part of what makes it a little bit uh, more contagious than the previous coronaviruses. Um, and so a lot of people ask questions about, you know, what about um, going to the grocery store? What about um, getting packages delivered? Um, you know, and that is a concern. Uh, cardboard is probably the safest, um, but really what they recommend is you open, you know, you open up the cardboard packages or whatever the packages are outside of your home, you empty everything out and then, um, or actually you open the package, you wash your hands, you carefully pull everything out. Um, and then when you dispose of the packaging, you wash your hands. It's just a lot of hand washing or hand sanitizer. Um, the other issue um, is that most of us in the world have never seen this virus before. So there is no pre-existing immunity. Um, there's no herd immunity. Uh, so most people that get exposed to this virus will um, potentially get sick. Uh, they've just never seen it before. And then um, the other thing that makes this virus a little harder to control is that um, it has um, what we call asymptomatic viral shed. Things in your droplets, in your secretions for, um, without having any symptoms. Um, they say that um, your, what we call your viral load is how much virus you're shedding, um, peaks about five to six days after you get sick. But there are people out there like young people that don't get very sick that can continue to spread the virus. So that makes it really tricky. Um, because it's, hard to know who's spreading it, the rate of infection is growing what we call exponentially. So I have a couple graphs that you've probably seen on the news already. Um, and they, um, and they uh, show that in most countries, um, particularly Italy is a big one to watch, um, in places where they didn't do very good at isolating the virus, um, the rate of cases grows exponentially. So that means it doubles every four days. So that doesn't sound so bad initially, but you know you have four cases and then 16 cases, and or you know it can grow um, really rapidly the more cases you get and the more exposure there is. And then there's other countries like Japan and South Korea that are really good at locking people down and um, containing the spread and their curve is a much flatter curve. Their trajectory is much flatter. Um, so that's why we talk about social distancing because we want to slow it down. We want to um, slow down the transmission to all people, not just sick and old people. Um, because if you don't slow the curve, then everybody will get sick all at once, and then our current healthcare system will get overwhelmed. Um, you know, and most of those people will get better, but it, the numbers of patients that are going to get sick um, and are going to get really sick um, it can be drastic, like we're seeing in Italy. Um, and so the whole point of social distancing is to flat, what we call flatten the curve, is spread out the amount of time that people are getting sick, because that will give our healthcare system uh, time to restock and um, have beds and have ventilators and have all those important medications and things that we need to help keep people alive. Um, but again, 
I, I didn't actually, I forgot to put this in my notes, so I'll add it in later. But um, most people that get this illness, like 80% will have a mild illness. It's like, um, you know, like a mild version of the flu, but there is a small percentage of the population, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, that can get really, really sick. So um, on our local hospital website, actually, there's a pretty good example of the difference with social distancing. So if you socially distance or if you segregate 25% of the population, it'll take two months for the virus to peak. And at that time, we would end up in our little town with 23 patients on ventilators based on the ratios and the percentages we're seeing and 111 patients hospitalized. Well, our little hospital has... Uh, I think 15 beds and two ICUs with two you know, potential ventilator um, rooms. And then the ER is a little bit bigger, um, but uh, you know, we would be completely overwhelmed. Um, if you do 60% of the community um, and you socially distance them, you separate them all out and keep them from spreading it to each other, um, that spreads out the time that we would see the peak of the illness. It would be more like three months, but we would only end up with two patients at a time in the hospital on ventilators and only nine hospitalized. So really slows and spreads things out. Um, so um, the best way that you can prevent spreading is this social distancing. I mean, we're all in homes with our families. And so unfortunately we can't uh, prevent spreading to each other, but um, you can prevent spreading to other people that you don't know. So you want to, they say, keep a distance of six feet is ideal, three feet, depending on where you are. If you're outside, um, three feet is probably fine. You want to wash your hands a lot. You want to avoid touching your face um, and you want to cover coughs and sneezes so that you don't spread droplets everywhere. Um, if you are out it's not necessarily as important in your home because you're all kind of exposing each other, but if you're out at work or in public, they need to frequently clean hard surfaces to keep that virus from living on them. And you want to avoid any contact with the sick person and you want to self quarantine if you're sick. And um, so um, self quarantining means that you need to um, be free of a fever for 72 hours or three days or um, have your symptoms have started at least seven days prior. Uh, and so that's what self-quarantining looks like. Um, so the signs uh, and symptoms that you'll get when you get this illness um, is fevers and they can be pretty high. The fevers can last up to 12 days. Um, you can get a cough that can last up to three weeks. These are kind of worst case scenarios. Um, most, like I said, most people, most healthy people can have a much milder course of illness. But the biggest concern with this is that in some susceptible individuals, it can attack the lungs and cause fluid to collect in the lungs. And so you can get shortness of breath and low oxygen levels. And that typically starts around day seven or eight. Um, uh, and then the other thing that we're recently learning is that about half of the people that are presenting with this have had some mild gastrointestinal issues, either uh, loss of appetite, nausea, diarrhea, um, that started a couple days before they um, started having the cough. So that's something to be aware of as well. Unfortunately, the patients that are most susceptible to this illness are people who have chronic medical diseases, uh, heart disease, particularly congestive heart failure, uh, diabetes, uh, chronic lung disease, emphysema. Um, they tend to get much sicker. Um, uh, young people, you know, initially they were saying young people don't get sick, but actually we are seeing young people, young healthy people occasionally get very sick. Um, and fortunately, children seem to do pretty well, uh, which is really good. Um, things like the flu, which are similar to this, um, influenza B can really make kids sick, and we see a lot of pediatric deaths from influenza. So fortunately, this is a little bit more sparing on the children. So what happens is when you start to get this shortness of breath, you get this fluid that fills up your lungs, and then you develop what's called adult, um, acute respiratory distress syndrome. And once that happens, you usually need to be put on some sort of mechanical ventilation because you just cannot get oxygen um, enough oxygen through your system. Uh, you can have a chest x-ray that looks like you have bilateral pneumonia, um, or if you're at altitude, it looks a lot like high altitude pulmonary edema, but it's not. Um, so what 
should you do if you start to get sick? Um, there is um, some testing out there, but um, really it's still fairly limited. And so we're really only testing people that have significant symptoms. Um, and so if you have very mild symptoms, low grade fever, a little cough, but you're otherwise feeling okay, we're not going to test you. Um, so we're going to test the people that um, are, um, are more susceptible, have higher fevers, um, or starting to have shortness of breath. Um, but the test is not, uh, it takes time. So unless you're at a huge hospital system, um, you know, the test has to be sent out to either one of the big lab companies, LabCorp or Quest, um, and the turnaround time, and what we're seeing right now is from the time they receive the swab is like four to five days. And in our remote location, you have to ship it and there's no shipping on the weekends. And so it can sometimes take eight, nine days to get these results. But it doesn't really make much difference because we treat you clinically. We don't treat you based on the test results. Um, the test is a nasal swab, um, and they're actually, um, I just learned in researching this, that there are a couple companies that are coming out with home testing kits. One is called Everly Well, and the other one is called Carbon Health. There might be more that I don't know of where they ship you the swab, you swab your nose, and then you send it back to them. But one of the concerns with that is um, maybe you don't swab it quite right, or um, maybe they might have false negatives um, and so if you get a negative test result even though you had the disease it will give you this confidence to go out and even though you're sick and so that's really not a good idea either um, so you can the te one of the tests i think everly well was 135 dollars but most people that i've talked to if they just have mild symptoms i say just stay home don't go to the hospital and self-quarantine yourself until like I said, you've had symptoms for at least seven days or your fever's been gone for at least three days. So when you get to the hospital, if you're sick enough to be admitted, there's really not a lot of treatments available yet. Uh, they just haven't had time to do the, um, to do like clinical trials and really get some good experience as to what works. So there's some theoretical medications that they're trying. The main one that you'll hear about in the news is chloroquine or hydroxychloroquine. Um, it's also the, gen the brand name is Plaquenil. And some people may be familiar with this because uh, they do use this medication for autoimmune conditions like lupus and rheumatoid arthritis. Um, the other medications that they're looking at are remdesivir, which is used for Ebola, um, and uh, the combination medication that's used for HIV. And there is some actually some evidence that azithromycin, which is your standard antibacterial z -pack, um, can help with inflam inflammation. Um, and so they've uh, been starting to use that a little bit. One of the concerning things about this virus is it seems as though that Tylenol and ibuprofen um, or acetaminophen, which is Tylenol, and ibuprofen, which is Motrin, Advil, Aleve, um, that those could pro potentially prolong the course of your illness. Uh, if you think about it, our body, and I've been telling parents this for years, a fever is designed to help your body fight infection. And if you decrease your fever, then it may take your body longer to fight that infection. Um, and so the other um, evidence that we're starting to see is it could potentially prolong the amount of time that you are shedding this virus, that this virus is in your secretions. So the advice that we're giving people now is really try not to use Tylenol, um, acetaminophen, or ibuprofen for fevers and body aches because um, it could potentially prolong how long you're sick and it could make you more infectious. If your fevers are really high and you're super miserable, you can take some, um, but really try and avoid it. You just kind of got to suffer through it. Um, the other treatments that we do in the hospital are all just completely supportive. Um, if your oxygen levels are low, we give you oxygen. If you're having trouble breathing, we intubate you, which means put a tube down your throat and put you on a breathing machine. Um, we can try some like nebulizers. Um, some, if your blood pressure is low, we can give you some medications for that, um, just like we would for any other critical care patient. Um, so, but fortunately, most of us won't end up there. <laughs> um, so when you look at um, the functional medicine side of things, um, really the goal is to support your immune system so that your immune system can fight against whatever viruses you get exposed to. And this is something you can do all the time, not just when we have coronavirus floating around. 
Um, so um, some of the things that we all know that we should do, but now we maybe have a little bit more time to focus on taking care of ourselves is make sure that you have good sleep hygiene. Make sure that you're sleeping seven, eight, even nine hours a day, um, that you have a nice dark room and you don't have any, um, uh, you know, you keep your electronic devices away and you don't use your blue screens an hour or two before bed um, just to make sure that you're getting good sleep. The other thing that's really important is stress management because we're all super stressed. You turn on the news and it is just uh, doom and gloom. Uh, and so try and do things to manage your stress. Um, get outdoors, go for a walk. Uh, if it's snowing where you are, go cross country skiing. Um, uh, try some meditation if you've never tried it. There's quite a few apps out there. Um, some of the ones that I like are Calm. Uh, or Headspace. Uh, there's another one that I haven't tried yet called 10% Happier that uh, is uh, supposedly good for fidgety people. Um, and then a gratitude journal, you know, things to be grateful for. You have a home, you have family, um, everybody's healthy for the moment. Um, you know, try and really um, tune into that. Uh, also exercise, which Rochelle is a huge part of, is uh, really important to keeping your immune system up, but you don't want to overdo it um, because overdoing exercise can stress your immune system as well. And then we all know nutrition is super important. I know it would be really nice to sit on the couch with a big glass of wine and some bonbons, um, but um, you really need to focus on eating whole foods, uh, especially foods that are rich in what we call phytonutrients. That helps your immune system. Um, and those come from foods that um, have the different colors of the rainbow. So make sure that you, the meals that you're preparing for your families are very colorful. Um, you want to avoid processed and packaged foods because those are all inflammatory and it stresses out your liver and your detoxification system. You want to limit sugars and refined flours for the same reason. They're very inflammatory. Um, and you want to... Um, you want to minimize your alcohol intake again because it just stresses out your system and your liver um, and drink lots of fluids, um, stay well hydrated. So some of the things um, from a functional medicine approach that you can do to try and support your immune system as well um, is vitamin C. And it's been known for a long time. Um, vitamin C uh, can um, is an antioxidant uh, and uh, Works best actually if you start taking it before you sick, before you get sick. Some people say you can take up to 5,000 milligrams a day, but I think that's probably a little overkill and maybe just a waste. Um, so you can take uh, up to 2,000 milligrams um, and it's best if you divide it throughout the day. Um, vitamin D is really important for immune support, um, but there is some evidence that vitamin D can potentially upregulate uh, um, these particular receptors which can potentially make um, the coronavirus worse. So you want to be careful with vitamin D. Um, if you've had testing before, you just want to make sure that you try and get keep your vitamin D levels in a, in a reasonable level. Um, you can probably take one, um, uh, one to 2,000 units a day without getting into too much trouble. It's a little hard for some of us to get outside and get sunlight, but if you can get some sunlight, that's the best way to get vitamin D. Um, and then, um, zinc, uh, you know, some people take oral zinc, um, but, uh, most of the evidence points to zinc lozenges actually working best because they, um, neutralize the virus in your throat where it's going to get in. Um, and there is some concern with, um, oral zinc doses that can decrease, uh, your copper levels. So you kind of want to be careful with too much oral zinc. Um, and then uh, you want to keep your gut healthy because your gut is one of your main de uh, defense uh, mechanisms. <clears throat> so that would be a good quality probiotic, things like bone broth and fermented foods to really help keep your gut healthy and improve what we call your barrier function to keep the bad stuff from getting in. <clears throat> uh, there's another supplement out there called N-acetylcysteine or NAC. It's a precursor to glutathione. Uh, that one um, is really good to help support your liver function and detoxification. And then there are some herbal antimicrobials. Um, probably the most common one is olive leaf extract, um, or there's some combination herbal antimicrobials um, that if you get sick, you could consider trying 
<clears throat> sorry, I'm going to have a little sip of tea here. Um, uh, you know, they're um, probably the one that I'm most familiar with is called Biocidin um, from a company called Biobotanicals Bot Research. Um, but there's a lot of different products out there that you could look at. Um, and so I think that's mostly what I have uh, for a kind of an overview of everything. And uh, let me see. All right, Rochelle, how does this work now? Um, I will be, um, I do have notes uh, with um, uh, some of those graphs that I was talking about. And so uh, you can, um, Rochelle will email out a link to that. Uh, someone has asked me if I can repeat the probiotic uh, information. Sure, just good quality probiotics. Uh, you know, if you, um, Sometimes it's a little hard to figure out exactly what probiotic you need. Um, there is some evidence that Saccharomyces boulardii, uh, which actually is a yeast, is good for uh, um, fighting infections. Um, but basically any good quality probiotic that uh, comes from a reputable company and has probably you know, somewhere around um, 10 to 50 billion uh, colony forming units of lactobacillus and bifida, uh, species is good. Um, I'm not too familiar with American, someone, uh, Amanda asked if there were any thoughts on American ginseng as a supplement. I am not particularly familiar um, with its antimicrobial properties. I know it's good for brain health, uh, but I don't know too much about its uh, antiviral properties. Um, I have another patient asking, she's pregnant, do you have any info on pregnancy in this or any advice for someone in the third trimester? Well, fortunately, um, unlike some other diseases like the flu, um, uh, this particular virus does not seem to attack pregnant women or babies, uh, you know, more than any, you know, any other virus. In fact, it, it seems to be less of an issue. Um, but, you know, you want to just do your best to stay healthy and uh, do everything, you know, rest, take it easy so that you carry to full term so that you don't have to deliver in the next, uh, you know, two to four weeks. Um, let's see here. Um, elderberry um, is uh, definitely known for its antiviral, antimicrobial properties. There's some elderberry syrups, some elderberry teas. I think that's probably a good thing to add to your uh, um, regimen. I haven't seen any specific studies on it though. Uh, another question, if someone is asymptomatic, do they eventually develop symptoms? Not necessarily. Uh, you know, at some point we may want to do testing of the entire um, population for epidemiology studies to find out how many people had this and didn't show any symptoms. There is uh, there are a couple companies that are testing antibodies, uh, IgG and IgM antibodies, um, that would be a blood test to try and figure out if, um, you know, what percentage of the population has already been exposed. That's one that I'm really looking forward to because I'd like to know if I've been exposed and then I could not worry so much about, you know, getting sick if I were out at work. Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, and the next question is hand sanitizer. Uh, isn't that designed more to kill bacteria versus a virus? Does hand sanitizer help at all if we can't wash our hands immediately? Uh, yes, hand sanitizer. Anything over 60% alcohol content has been shown to um, kill most things. Uh, you are supposed to spray it on and really wipe it in, um, you know, for 10, 20 seconds uh, in order for it to work. Um, let's see here. Um, you know, there's a question about do warm liquids help the lung health preventatively? I actually uh, listened to someone else's suggestions about this recently. I'm not sure about the warm liquids part other than, you know, tea can have a lot of um, antioxidant and immune supporting properties depending on what type you pick, if it's like turmeric or, um, or some of the reishi mushrooms, uh, you know, Technically, warm liquids don't get into your lungs, you're drinking them. So um, I can see how steam could um, help uh, break up any mucus uh, in your lungs, but I don't know about drinking warm liquids, other than that feels good. And it's good for a sore throat. Um, let's see here. 
um, uh, B propolis. Someone's asking about B propolis or however you pronounce it. Um, you know, in general, it's a pretty good antimicrobial, but, but there is some concern that the propolis can um, upregulate the um, ACE receptors similar to vitamin D and actually the same thing with vitamin A, high doses of vitamin D and vitamin A. So I wouldn't recommend that for this one. Um, uh, what symptoms are not part of the virus? For example, I hear that sneezing is not one of them. That's actually a good point. This virus typically does not have a lot of sinus congestion. Um, can have a little bit of sore throat, but not a lot of earaches. Um, uh, haven't seen a lot of nausea or vomiting. Uh, I did say, you know, like you, some patients do have some diarrhea. Um, uh, but yeah, sinus congestion is kind of a clue that this could potentially just be any other random run-of-the-mill virus. You know, we're testing people coming through the ER for other things, and we're still seeing, uh, haven't seen much lately, but we're still seeing RSV, which is common in kids. We're still seeing strep. So there are lots of other things that could be making you sick. Um, let's see here. Uh, someone is asking about the probiotics company that you use. Um, there is, uh, let's see here. Let me see if I can. The, the one I personally take is called Seed, uh, S-E-E-D, and that's the website, seed.com. Um, it's been pretty well studied. Um, there's also, uh, let's see here. Um, uh, Um, my, uh, microbiome labs make some really good probiotics. Megaspore biotic is a nice soil based probiotic. And then Claire labs makes a nice line therabiotic spec, um, line, um, metagenics also makes a nice one. Ultra flora spectrum, um, uh, pure encapsulations, you know, kind of the main uh, functional medicine uh, companies all make some good ones. Um, let's see here. My child has asthma. Is he more susceptible to this particular virus? Um, well, unfortunately, yes. Um, so you want to do all the things that you normally do to just keep his lung health uh, optimal. So you might want to consider using his inhaler a little bit more often than you would. Um, but again, fortunately, we're not seeing a lot of children get very sick with this. So even with asthma, he's probably less at risk than older patients with chronic medical problems. I'm currently sick without a fever at all and trying to see at what point I am not contagious anymore without a fever at all. So the self-quarantine recommendations um, uh, recommend seven days from the onset of your symptoms if you're not having fevers. Uh, can the supplement magnesium malate be helpful? I'm not aware of magnesium. All the magnesiums, there's glycinate, there's citrate, there's lots of different magnesiums. I'm not aware of any specific antiviral properties um, uh, other than most people tend to be a little deficient in magnesium, so it's always good to take. And magnesium is really good for stress management, uh, especially if you're in the Epsom salt bath form. Uh, that's my favorite form of stress management right now. Um, what about gargling with hot salt water? Um, gargling, uh, well, that would help. Uh, depends, uh, that can help kind of clear the back of your throat of um, a virus, and so that's probably good. Uh, I don't know about any specific evidence for it. Um, I did say a three foot radius outside. I think if you're outside, if you're walking side by side with somebody, I don't think you need to be a full six feet apart, uh, particularly if you um, are not coughing or sneezing in their general direction. Um, I haven't seen any, so have any studies shown that virus dies quicker in warmer climates? Um, you know, that is what happens with the flu. That is why the flu is seasonal because um, it does, uh, well, a couple reasons. One, it is uh, susceptible to um, heat and UV radiation. And two, people are outside more and they're um, in less close contact. So that's why we see the Southern hemispheres have their uh, flu in the summertime and then we have ours in the wintertime. Um, but, um, there's not a lot of great evidence about that because we're seeing cases all over the world. We're seeing cases at the um, 
you know, near the equator. Uh, and so that isn't um, as, uh, it doesn't seem to be as common or doesn't seem to be affecting the virus as much. We do know that the virus is sensitive to UV radiation. One of the things that we use at the hospital is a thing called phone soap. And so I'll put my mask and my glasses in there after I see a patient and it uh, disinfects with UV light and it is susceptible to that. Um, have my husband wants to know if drugstore probiotics are any good? In general, no, they're not. The, the, the thing you really want with probiotics is to know that they're shelf stable and that they've been tested to make sure that the, pro, the number of live uh, colony forming units that they started with are the number that you're actually getting by the time you take the probiotics. And so I would not recommend um, uh, drugstore probiotics. Um, what are the symptoms for, uh, children? Um, uh, they're the same, but typically milder, uh, kids in general do tend to get higher fevers than adults. Uh, so they might have slightly higher fevers, but usually they, um, wouldn't have, they don't typically progress to the shortness of breath and the severe respiratory disease that adults do. Um, let's hear. Could you please address increased risk for people with autoimmune disease and overreactive immune systems? Um, excuse me, this is, um, this is a little bit of a tricky one um, because it all depends on where you are in the autoimmune spectrum. Um, if you have an autoimmune disease, that means that your immune system is actually overreactive, but it may not be surveilling incoming viruses, it may be just attacking yourself. Uh, and so um, if your autoimmune disease is mild or pretty well controlled, then you're probably very similar to the rest of the general population. If you have pretty severe autoimmune disease and you're on immune suppressants, like steroids or some of these newer biologics like Humira, then you are considered immunosuppressed. And yes, you are at higher risk for getting, um, getting the virus and having complications from the virus. Uh, what is interesting though is that medication Plaquenil um, is the chloroquine or hydroxychloroquine is one that they're considering using to treat, that they have been using to treat the virus. We're not sure whether or not it works or not. And a lot of people um, with milder forms of autoimmune disease are already taking that. Um, but there is no recommendations right now to start taking it if you um, have a disease. You, you know, you really just need to do all the things that. Uh, help support your immune system and keep you healthy. Um, let's see here. What can we do to protect ourselves when grocery shopping? Uh, well, you know, I, I have during exposure, but not now. I've changed my mind for the short time. Uh, you um, could wear gloves, uh, but you would have to be very careful if you're wearing gloves. To not touch wow. your but you're not walking. We've got people on. <laughs> Hello, Bumby. Hello. Hi. Hi. Is that Alexis? Bumby, go, go, go. Hi. I'm back. Um, so at the grocery store, um, one thing you could do is you could take some disinfectant wipes um, and wipe down the cart before you um, go through the grocery store. Um, and then um, and then again, just don't touch your face. And when you get done, um, we'll bring your own bags and you could potentially bag your own groceries. And then when you get home, um, wash your hands uh, after you're done, you know, unloading everything. Um, that's probably, and you also want to maintain that social distancing. My husband went to the grocery store this morning and he said that there's all sorts of lines and X's and things painted on the ground now of where you're supposed to stand to stay away from people. Um, are you familiar with wellness formal herbal, herbal defense? Um, I do like that one. I used to use that one a lot just for regular viruses. I'm not familiar, you know, there's no evidence that it would work for, coronavirus specifically, uh, but um, I have used that in the past and I do like that one. Um, and the pediatric formula, the kids formula, tastes way better than the adult formula. Uh, how would you recommend a family grocery shop right now? Like who should go, how to handle unpackaging food, et cetera? Well, we, um, we did talk a little bit about the unpackaging 
Um, you know, some families are just having one person be the point person and go out and do all the grocery shopping. I think as long as whoever goes, um, you know, washes their hands really well when they get back, um, then, um, you know, the, it, you know, there are some people that are saying that if you go outside into the world, you should come home, you should take off your shoes, you could take off your clothes, you should take a shower um, before interacting with the rest of your family. And so I guess if you have some family members that are more susceptible, that would be the safest way to take care of not exposing them. Um, but I think probably just washing your hands is enough. Um, uh, chlorhexidine gluconate solution useful as a body wash. Chlorhexidine is what we use in the OR and um, in the ER for um, prepping for surgical procedures. Uh, it kills just about everything. <laughs> so yeah, that would work. <laughs> um, I don't know how toxic it is from a functional medicine approach. Uh, I think there are other um, hand sanitizers and disinfectants, you know, there's um, seventh generation makes a really nice disinfectant wipe. Um, and then there are quite a few hand sanitizers. Um, I, I'm sure most of you have all heard of Thrive Market. I think they're unfortunately a little bit behind shipping now, but they sell a lot of non-toxic cleaning, home cleaning products. Uh, what is the impact of having had chemotherapy and or radiation therapy? Well, that all depends on how long it's been. Um, you know, if you've just had chemotherapy in the last few weeks to months, then your immune system is unfortunately depressed and you need to limit exposure as much as possible. Uh, you know, if you've had, if it's been in the, you know, over six months to a year um, and you've, um, you know, kind of taken care of your body and, and gotten back to a healthy state, then it likely doesn't have any effect on your um uh, risk of contracting the virus and getting super sick from it now. Uh, let's see here. What about laundry dryer? Will it zap the virus if gloves go in the dryer for 10 minutes? Hmm. I don't know about that one. <laughs> um, I, uh, you know, typically, um, I don't know if just heat will do it. And I don't know if laundry, if dryers are hot enough, you could lay them out in the sun uh, since the UV light does help, um, uh, that would probably work too. Mm, someone is asking if ice water is not good because it could promote growth. Uh, I don't know that ice water would promote any growth of anything. Um, so I don't think that that's a problem. And then there was a question way far back um, that I sort of skipped over. Um, do I have an opinion on alpha lipoic acid? Um, I don't have any specific opinion on it. It's um, one of the amino acids uh, in general. We are deficient on a lot of amino acids, particularly um, when we eat just a lot of muscle meats. Um, but I don't know anything specific about how it would be, how it would relate to coronavirus. Let's see here. Um, let's see here. What if you had chemo and are on a PARP inhibitor? What blood levels do you look at to see if you are suppressed? That would be a question for your oncologist. I don't know. Um, I don't know anything about that specific medication. Do you think with the measures we are taking across the country for the most part, do you think we are doing enough to slow the curve? Absolutely. I do. Uh, as difficult as this is for all of us to stay home with our children and for all of the businesses that are going to struggle, um, I do think that we will um, protect the ability of our healthcare system to take care of people when they get sick. Um, it took me a long time to get to that. My husband said I was going through the five stages of grief. Uh, <laughs> I'd had a lot of anger and some crying, and I have kind of come to the realization that this is what we have to do. And so when you have an opportunity to sort support some of those businesses that are struggling, we need to do that as much as possible to help our economy rebound, because I think, unfortunately, that's going to be one of the biggest, most devastating consequences of this virus. Um, are antibodies found in patients that have recovered? Um, uh, yes. 
that's um, that's that blood test. There's a finger stick and then there's a blood test that are potentially coming out hopefully soon. We have to wait for the FDA to approve them. That would test for IgG and IgM levels. IgM uh, is an indicator of a recent infection. IgG is uh, evidence of um, immunity, some form of immunity. Now, coronavirus is like any other virus, like the flu, it can change and mutate. And so we won't be perfectly immune to it, uh, but we'll have a much better chance of fighting it because uh, you'll have had some exposure. Um, I've read some articles showing different underlying medical conditions that are at risk. Is there a comprehensive list and what is the best place to get that information? Um, mostly they're talking about people with um, uh, heart and lung conditions. Um, so chronic heart disease, congestive heart failure, emphysema. I haven't, um, I haven't seen a very comprehensive list, um, but if you're, you know, uh, if you're generally unhealthy, if you have diabetes and your blood sugars are out of control, if you're obese, um, that makes it um, harder for your lungs to fight the infection. Um, uh, but I haven't seen a specific list. The CDC has a very extensive website that has information for patients as well as providers. Um, you could uh, try looking on that website. <clears throat> Is it safe to use a pool or a hot tub? Someone else asked me that question recently, particularly the non-chlorinated public pools, like um, we have a local hot spring pool here. Um, I wouldn't, uh, I would say probably not. Uh, they're not hot enough to potentially kill, uh, to kill the virus. Um, your own um, hot tub is fine, as long as you're just sharing it with your family members as part of your self-quarantine, then it's good for stress management. Um, but I wouldn't go in a public pool at this point. Uh, can you please repeat the liver support product NAC? Yep, it's N-acetylcysteine. Um, and it's in my notes. Um, you can take, uh, you can take. I think it's up to 1,000 to 1,500 milligrams a day. And it is the precursor to glutathione, which helps you conjugate and excrete toxins and helps with um, liver support. Uh, I am monitoring the CDC and World Health Organization websites. Uh, versus coronavirus.gov. Anything else I should monitoring for facts versus speculation? No, I think those are probably the best websites for the facts. Um, Mono County, if you're in our town, does have a website that gives you a daily update of what's happening here. I think most towns probably have a daily emergency website that will help you know what's going on in your local community. Um, but those would um, those two websites would have the best uh, unbiased uh, information. I've been using a cup of vinegar with my laundry detergent. Will that help sanitize the washing machine? Um, yes, uh, it should. Vinegar is acidic, and um, that should help. Uh, that should help, but I, I don't know specifically. Uh, should you or can you take NAC and glutathione together? Uh, well, it's sort of just a double whammy. Uh, the NAC helps you make more glutathione. Uh, so typically, I just have people take one or the other. The glutathione uh, is, uh, you need to find a formulation that is well absorbed. Usually, we um, do a liposomal glutathione that goes under the tongue or is in kind of a gel capsule. Um, the older formulations of glutathione don't really get absorbed, and so they're not very useful. How long would you guess we will end up having to social distance? Just a guess. Um, unfortunately, my guess is potentially a couple of months. I think if we prepare ourselves for that, uh, then if it's less, then we'll, we'll be much better off. Um, uh, but um, there, I did see one uh, email from one of my sources today that uh, was a little bit more optimistic than that based on the numbers coming out of China but I'm quite suspect of the numbers coming out of China. They haven't had any positive cases in four days, and so that just makes you wonder if they've stopped testing. Um, maybe they just haven't had any really sick patients in the last four days. Um, so I'm gonna have to prepare ourselves for the long haul. Um, 
And then, um, uh, let's see here, there's a question here about where to access the notes and Rochelle will let you guys know how to find that uh, after, the, um, after the session. Uh, should we contract COVID? You mentioned not taking fever reducers. Any other way to treat symptoms safely? Um, that is a tough one. Um, you know, the elderberry syrup, I think, can help with sore throats and cough. Um, uh, um, nice steamy showers. Uh, if, you, you know, this doesn't have a lot of sinus congestion, so decongestants probably aren't going to help that much. Um, there are over-the-counter cough syrups uh, that um, can help, uh, you know, from the conventional side of things. The, one that, the ones that end with DM, dextromethorphan, those are the most effective cough syrups. Um, as far as the fevers go, what we usually tell parents with little kids is to strip them naked and put them in cool baths, but adults don't usually like to do that. Um, so, um, cool showers can help um, bring your fever down, like lukewarm showers, and um, uh, and drinking lots and lots of fluids because you can get very dehydrated when your temperature is high. Anything particular for those of us living with first line responders, both boosting our immune system and theirs? Well, um, speaking as a first line responder, I have been giving my children uh, vitamin C every day and a uh, low dose of vitamin D. Um, and um, that's specifically what I'm doing. But other than that, um, I'm, I've not been quarantining myself from them. Um, I do try and, you know, wear my hospital scrubs at in the hospital and take those off before I come home and wash my hands. Is all this Lysoling of things going to come at other health costs to our community, our immunity? Um, yeah, well, you know, like I said, in the past, I've been a big believer in germ exposure because that's how you stimulate and maintain a good immune system. Uh, I think Lysol and some of the other um, conventional um, uh, uh, disinfectants have some really nasty chemicals in them. So I personally don't use them at home. Um, I use, um, like I said, I stick with uh, cleaner disinfectants like seventh generation um, uh, and uh, some of the other products that I've found on Thrive Market. Um, I really am not a big fan of most of the grocery store uh, cleaning products. Uh, would taking an expectorant help with mucus accumulation? Definitely, it definitely could. So there's, um, uh, oh, I'm totally blanking on the name of it. Um, and uh, mucomist actually is uh, uh, one that we use in the hospital, um, but there's the over-the-counter one that I'm totally blanking on. Um, uh, what is low dose for kids? I think, um, you mean, um, for vitamin C and vitamin D, um, my youngest child, he's about 60 pounds. I give him a thousand units of vitamin D a day and my older child is now bigger than me and I give him 2000 units a day. Uh, if that's kind of gives you a range, um, and same with the vitamin C, my younger child gets 500 milligrams in the morning and my older one is getting a thousand milligrams. Mucinex. Thank you very much, <laughs> Tina and Valerie. <laughs> I cannot remember that. <laughs> Can you explain ultraviolet lights and what type and exposure? I don't know exactly um, what type is in this phone soap device that we have, but sunlight, um, which we're not going to have a lot of in our town for the next week, um, can uh, supposedly can kill the virus. Um, I think that um, there is some evidence uh, as far as detoxification about uh, saunas and infrared lights. Um, the saunas are really more for heat and sweating um, and detoxification, whereas the um, near-infrared lights like Juve, um, those penetrate the cell more and might potentially help stimulate your immune system a little bit better. Um, uh, so you, you could definitely try something like that. Um, refrigerated versus non-refrigerated probiotics. There's some really good non-refrigerated ones out there. Um, so I... Um, 
you know, it, whatever you find that um, looks good to you. If you find a non-refrigerated one, then it's easier. You don't have to keep it cold. All right. It looks like the questions are kind of slowing down. Um, wow. That was amazing and a lot. And <laughs> so many, no, like in a good way. Um, I think, you know, spending an hour doing something like this is so much more beneficial to our health um, than spending 23 hours freaking out at the news. So um, yes. like, <laughs> you know, you empowered us with stuff that we can do to stay healthy and you know what the reality of this is right now. So this has been recorded. What I'm going to do, if you were signed up for this class, just like you got the link to the class, I'm going to go back and put together, um, give me a little bit of time. <laughs> so I have, to have three kids home. Um, but I will put the notes that Jenny will get to me. I will uh, upload this to our website and have the recording. And um, I believe I'm going to give this to Jenny. I mean, I'm sure, is this okay for us to share with people? Yeah, that's fine with me. Okay. Um, and again, you know, this was amazing uh, hour of all of our, I mean, everyone was so engaged. It was amazing. Anyone else just do a lot of shopping on Amazon? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, yes. So um, don't look at your credit card statements. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so yes, thank we're you. Uh, supporting businesses. We're yeah. supporting the economy. And I will also include um, Jenny's information to her functional fit functional fitness that's what her functional holistic um practice so you know if um you would like to work with her more i'm sure virtual stuff is going to become obviously the norm and stuff like that in a lot of areas but luckily we are trained on that side of things so i want to keep it to an hour because that's what i promised jenny and we're right up a about to that if there's any um a ton of thank you so yes uh, everyone is so grateful that was a very You're informative. Welcome. I'm happy to help. Thank you. And that's what, that's what it is. So um, everyone have a good day. Go outside. Again, get don't your kids ever, outside. Get your kids outside. <laughs> eat well. You know, that's the stuff we always talk about here. You went over exactly like what we live by, which are the seven pillars um, of, you know, exercise, water, self-care, getting outside, sleep, food, and being grateful. So I loved that, um, you know, and that's why I did reach out to Jenny because I knew she'd be in line with what we really believe is going to keep us healthy. We're just going to have to do it on our um, social isol isolation a little bit more. I have to say one of the silver linings of all this is my boys are 12 and 14 and I've been, I've been, you know, moaning over the last few years that all this functional medicine things that I'm learning, I can't make them do because they're out at school and they're eating what their friends are eating. And I'm like, well, now I control everything they eat. <laughs> Perfect. I know. <laughs> we have a lot with teenagers here. So yeah, we'll keep the lines open. And you know, if we're going to be on this um, social distancing, I'm sure we can have Jenny back. Maybe we could do um, a couple more, you know, because I'm sure by next week, there's going to be a whole nother set of information and things. So um, we'll keep this relationship going. And um, everyone, yeah, just on behalf of all of us, Jenny, super, super thankful Thank you, everyone. Have a good day. Um, we'll see you later in class. You know, the VFIT schedule is loaded. We have lots of meditation, stretching, um, we're ha grateful, happy hours. So we're definitely trying to give options besides, um, you know, that help your mental health as well. Great. Well, thanks for having me and everybody stay safe and be healthy. All right. Bye. We'll send you guys all, Jenny. Do you want to give them your website or anything, Jenny, right now? Or... Uh, sure, my web website is uh, functionalmedmammoth.com. Function, yeah. And we will, again, email all of this to that, everyone. That yeah, and I, have a, I have a partner too, uh, Kim Escudero, uh, joined my practice a few months ago. So there's two of us if you uh, need to be seen. We are doing everything by uh, telemedicine right now, um, just because our office is very small. We cannot maintain social distancing. Um, but most of functional medicine you can do uh, remotely anyway, so that part's good. Perfect. Well, thank you. Have okay. a great Sunday afternoon, everyone. Bye. 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 Thank you, Jenny.